Okay, we're taking a look at inductive reasoning. In inductive reasoning, um, the book says that it's the process of arriving at a general conclusion based on observations of specific examples. So what does this mean for us? Basically what that's saying is that we're going to make um, a conjecture or an educated guess based off of what we observe of a small sample of a larger population. So if I'm going into a classroom and I'm going to ask the kids, raise your hand if you like chocolate, and every single one of the kids raises their hand, I might make the conjecture or the educated guess that all kids like chocolate. But because I know for a fact that there are kids who don't like chocolate and there are some kids who are allergic to chocolate and therefore can't taste it to see if they like it, I know that my conjecture isn't true because um, it doesn't fit everyone in the population. So that's going to be a counterexample, which we'll talk about a, in a little bit more detail in a minute. But you can see that that conjecture, that educated guess that I'm making off of my tiny sample isn't really going to hold up. So let's look at this with a little bit more detail. If we're looking at conjectures. A conjecture is an educated guess based on known information. The conjecture appears to be true but has not been formally proven, which we looked at just a second ago with the chocolate and the kids. We can't prove what we're saying um, is true about that small population. We can't prove that it's true for everything that could be in that population. So our classroom doesn't represent the entire population of kids very well. So again here we can look at another conjecture. In this one, the forecaster is making conjecture that it's going to rain all day. I'm going out to dinner this night and I'm going to make the conjecture that at 8 o'clock when I'm assuming my dinner will be over, um, I'm making the conjecture that it's still going to be raining. So I'm going to prepare for rain when I go out that night. A hypothesis is just another word for conjecture. It also means to make an educated guess that has not been proven. So here we have a couple. He has this brand new robot kit and she's telling him, you know, you better read the directions. So her hypothesis is that he never follows the directions. In this case, it looks as though her hypothesis is proven true. And she's saying that, or he's saying that women are usually smarter than men. So there's his hypothesis. But in this case, his hypothesis will not be proven true. His hypothesis will be proven false because there are a lot of very smart, very intelligent men out there who are smarter than women. Sorry, ladies, but we know it's true. Just never tell them. All right, so for our counterexamples that we're going to look at, a counterexample is an example that proves the conjecture to be false. So if I'm looking here and here and here, I might be able to say, you know, I'm going to make the conjecture that every time I see the sky, it is blue. So the sky is always blue. I have my few observations, my conjecture. So now we're going to look and see if my conjecture will hold up. Mm. If I look at the sky at night, the sky is black. So therefore, my conjecture that the sky is always blue is proven false, which means that that is the counterexample. So here are some more examples of inductive reasoning. We have patterns and uh, random samplings. Uh, that happens a lot in research. Again, make sure that you're noticing this line here. If any of you are reading this, it is from my imagination. It is not proven true at all. I just happen to like garlic. Okay, and then here's another pattern. We're looking here and we can see that when we have one and one, it's two. One and two is three. Two and one is three. Three and one is four. Three and three is six. So we're going to or we're going to keep that pattern going, and that is using inductive reasoning because we're looking at our observations of the pattern above to create or to keep the pattern going below. And then again, some more patterns. And in your book, you'll be looking at a lot of patterns for inductive reasoning. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.